Aloha and welcome to Live at the Legislature, where every week during the legislative session we give you a chance to hear directly from state senators about what's going on here at the Capitol. This week, Kaka'ako is one of the state's fastest growing and fastest changing areas. In addition, developments in the Ala Moana area mark the Kaka'ako Ala Moana Waikiki Corridor as one of the most dynamic areas in the state. Senator Sharon Moriwaki, heard in the, from the 12th District, represents those areas as well as Mo'ili Ili and McCulley. Aloha, Senator. Aloha. Um, th this is your first elected office. It is. So people don't have a long, long history of hearing about you. It's true. Can you tell us about what you were doing before? Sure. Just before being elected, I was at the University of Hawaii. I was uh, the uh, co-chair of what's called the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. It's one of the projects that I started as associate director for the Public Policy Center at UH. Uh, and I, my whole life has been in public service, but on the executive side, I was uh, the uh, um, uh, vice president for, administ uh, for administration and for uh, the academic affairs for UH Manoa uh, and the system. Uh, before that, I was a, uh, administrative director for the courts and worked under uh, C.J. Moon. Uh, mm -hmm. And before that, I was in the Waihei cabinet mm -hmm. as both the deputy director of labor and the the um, uh, what's now called the Department of Human Resources Development, the Personnel Services Director. So I've been in, in public service a long time, uh, and this is the first time I've run for elected office, and I'm um, seeing it from a legislative perspective. So what convinced you to, to finally run for office? Well, you know, Richard, four years mm -hmm. ago, um, our, our community, as you say, was fastest growing, mm -hmm. a lot of buildings coming up, and, and the community was constantly going to the authority, it was the Hawaii Community Development Authority, which is the zoning development um, um, authority in, for Kaka'ako. We kept on fighting a lot of the, the variances that were, were being brought in without community input. So we went to our senator, then senator, my predecessor, and said, you know, you really need to support the community. Well, we, we didn't seem to get very far with that. And so I told the senator, I said, you know, if you don't do something, I'm going to run. <laughs> he said, <laughs> so four years later, nothing was being done. Uh, and I vowed that I would represent our community, bring our voices to the Capitol and make sure that our voices are heard. And you were a strong advocate for Kaka'ako at the time, and you're also a Kaka'ako resident. Correct. I was, yes, and I am. I still am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you describe to us what it's like seeing the process from the inside or from the other side. Okay, from the other side, you know, we thought, oh, they're not listening to us. We'd come up and, you know, uh, we really couldn't get, like, the heights restricted. Uh, Representative Scott Syke, who also lives in the district, was very instrumental in changing law four years ago, making it much more community-oriented. Three members on the board changed the board composition, terminated that board. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of changes were made. From the inside, um, you know, I'm quite impressed. I, I, um, I, I have to say, my colleagues are very thoughtful, they're considerate, they listen to the community, um, and, and, and they really do change the bills, amend the bills, to take into consideration a lot of the comments that come in. And um, I, I'm so impressed. They defer to me as being the, <laughs> the senator from the district, so I can bring voices that I hear in the community, and some of the bills um, are being heard um, that represent what people have been crying about for years and years and not getting anything done. So I, I am um, hopeful. Of course, it's early in the session, so we'll see where the priorities fall yeah. at the end of session. But for now, I'm, I'm um, really pleased to be here, and I, I um, have very good colleagues in the Senate. Uh, in addition to the, the, the building height and density concerns, what other uh, issues are developing in Kaka'ako? Well, um, in Kaka'ako per se, um, there's, there's a lot happening in terms of, of more looking at um, trying to develop um, like the bridge across, uh, this is Howard Hughes again, the bridge across the Alamona uh, Boulevard because as you know, there was mm -hmm. that huge accident which was right. awful uh, a couple weeks back. Um, and, and I think there's more of a, um, with the new board, there is more community involvement. So, uh, and I, I believe um, when I talked to Howard Hughes, Todd Apoll says they're gonna have a couple of community meetings before they even put pen to paper. So that's mm -hmm. a positive thing that's come about. Um, 
And, and again, traffic, congestion, infrastructure, all of these are concerns that we hope will be addressed um, by HCDA. Mm -hmm. The homeless, of course, is always a big right. problem. And one of my, um, my efforts is to help the Children's Discovery Center. Mm, it right. has, uh, the director is going to close shop, and I think you saw it in the papers. We've been trying to get uh, her grant in aid uh, through DAGS, uh, Department of Accounting and General Services, to start supporting them so that they can build some of the renovations they wanted. Also, to have that property transferred from the state, because, you know, it's all state land. Right transferred to the city so the city can start monitoring the HPD can come in and and monitor over the night hours when the homeless poop on her steps mm -hmm. and you know she, she has a real hard time cleaning up uh, every day and and I feel for her and I, I really hope that we can solve it without having to make any new laws mm -hmm. but enforce the laws we have on the books. Okay, you know, we talk a lot about Ala Moana as well. There's some new developments going on there. But it seems like one area that doesn't get a lot of attention is the Makali Mo'ili'ili area. Um, what's going on there that, that we should be concerned about? Well, there about? are new developments coming on. It is city property, so um, a lot of the, the, um, the kinds of things you hear in Kaka'ako, which go through HCDA, the, mm -hmm. the state jurisdiction, uh, go through um, the city council. So there are buildings, like Alder Street is one. It's the, where um, the judiciary had the... Um, right. the um, mm -hmm detention home, mm -hmm. while well, they're building next to it um, uh, affordable housing, and then having the detention home still there, but it's to house uh, sort of the status of offenders waiting for, for um, hearings. Mm -hmm. um, they, there may be like 12 beds. It's not a big facility, but they want to keep that going and also get get um, the affordable housing, which is really needed in mm -hmm. the Makalimo'ili Ili area. There are those kinds of developments occurring. Again, you know, there are a lot of older people there. They're afraid to go out at night. So part of what we're trying to look at is how can we support the seniors to help them age in place, help them even in terms of renovating their homes and their um, making like two-story walk-ups or, or kinds of things where they can have some income to help them survive and stay in, in their own homes. So I think elderly services also um, helping to renovate these houses and giving them low interest loans. So a lot of housing bills are coming through because affordable housing is a real big issue. There. Um, you introduced an interesting bill this session that's getting a lot of attention right now involving um, repeat offenders oh, at yeah. Mikey Key. Can you tell us about that? Sure. You know, going to the neighborhood boards, you hear all the concerns that come up and all the people who get excited about what's happening and, and a concern. Uh, one of those is the bill um, that's called, I call it the three strikes bill. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is that we've got a lot of repeat offenders. They come in, they assault people. I guess Waikiki is a haven for you know, mm -hmm. doing anything you want. Right. Uh, and so um, these people come in and they, they, they know who these people are. So HPD said this would really help if they, they had a way to keep these repeat offenders out. So this bill says that if um, you come in for the third offense, say misdemeanors, um, then the judge has the option to put you on probation and say, hey, you know, buddy, the next time you come in, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. and, get, and, and the restriction is between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., um, you can't come into Waikiki because that's when all these crimes occur. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it really is a deterrent and hopefully these misbehave, behaving misbehaviors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stop. Um, and it's a similar bill that, um, that passed uh, and has been very effective, which, which was for the prostitution, mm -hmm. um, on street prostitution, that stopped mm -hmm. the street walkers right. that we used to have mm -hmm. before. So we'll see. Again, bills are to be heard. Right. So people who like it, people who don't like it, um, should come in. And, and I say from the Senate side anyway, I see that the, the chairs really do listen to everybody, the committee listens to everybody, and if there's something wrong with the bill that can be addressed, they amend the bill so that something effective gets passed, hopefully. Now this bill is for um, convictions for misdemeanors. Yes. Um, so it doesn't include status offenses. One of the no. concerns is with, say, runaways who, no. who congregate in Waikiki. No. These are people who actually have been convicted of a crime, mm -hmm. a misdemeanor, so it's low offenses. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's like three times, you do it three times, yeah. shouldn't you learn? Right. <laughs> you know, and so the judge, and it's also discretionary. So the judge can say, okay, if there's a good, um, good cause exception, mm -hmm. like you go to work, except that you shouldn't be misbehaving if you go to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then, you know, you're, you're, you know mm -hmm. he could not 
put this uh, penalty of jail on the fourth offense. Okay. Um, what other concerns are you hearing just from generally from, from the, the district as a whole, other than development, I mean, uh, and, and crime, of course? Are there some lower level issues that people I, should be aware I of? I think it's, it's all the same, and it's across the state, and that's why affordable housing is my number one priority. Mm -hmm. It's really affordable housing. And this session, you'll see, and, and my chair, I'm on the housing committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> um, chair has put in a slew of bills in affordable housing, um, whether it's 99 year leases to, um, uh, helping those at the, the real high demand, which is 80% of the area median income income levels and below, um, as well as rent supplement programs. So affordable housing is is like I, we really need to pass that. The second is Kupuna aging yeah. in place. We have a lot of elders, especially in my district, and so a number of bills coming coming out are to have Kupuna care, Kupuna caregiver programs, um, and also helping them age in place, active living in your later mm -hmm. years. Um, the lower level bills, um, I guess, it, it, again, it, nothing is low level. You know what <laughs> I mean? I see, see crime. Um, I've got another bill. Um, um, which, which actually is, is something that came in discussions with Liquor Commission that a lot of these crimes or infested places are these clubs that are right. unlicensed. Mm -hmm. So that's another bill I have in place that raises the penalty uh, to a felony if a club or an establishment does not not register if they're serving liquor. Mm -hmm. And um, and then that gives the um, the um, authority for the liquor commission to come in and inspect. Okay. And so those are the kinds of bills right now in the books that I see. Well, thank you, Senator. Thank all of you for joining us today. And join us again next time, live at the legislature. Do you know your legislators? Visit capital.hawaii.gov and enter your street name to find detailed information about your representatives and senators. From your district number to the committees and current bills your legislators have introduced, this is an easy way to stay up to date with what is happening in your community. If you're looking for detailed information concerning Hawaii State Senate and House hearings, please visit olelo.org forward slash gov hyphen archives. Videos are arranged by date with the most recent at the top of the list. You can also search the on-demand media library by typing keywords into the search box. Are you looking for an easy way to get involved in the legislative process? Stop by the public access room located in room 401 at the Hawaii State Capitol. The public access room provides citizens of Hawaii's facilities, services, and equipment to enhance their ability to participate in the legislative process. Aloha and good morning to the House's segment of Live at the Legislature, where every week we sit down with members from the House of the Rep Representatives to talk about issues, concerns, legislation, controversies, whatever is trending on the social scene, anything you want to talk about, we will be discussing at some point point in the future. Joining with us today are two of the newest members of the House of Reps. They are Representative Lisa Kitagawa, she represents Kaneohe Kahalu'u and Waihole, and Representative Dale Kobayashi, he represents Maunoa University and Moili'ili'ili. Welcome, thank you for joining us today. On a very wet and windy and traffic plagued uh, day, I understand yes. you, how was it coming over from uh, Kaneohe for you? It was really busy. <laughs> it was a lot of traffic. It took probably almost an hour and a half when it usually can take me only 35 minutes maybe. Well, I live in Kailua, so I know it took me two hours to get here. And Representative, you live in God's country, Manoa, so it took you, what, two minutes <laughs> to get tougher. here? No, it took about five minutes as opposed to my usual four, so I was a little upset. <laughs> well, sorry about that. <laughs> People on the Windward side feel your pain. Right. But wh why don't we start with you then? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the district that you represent? Sure. It's uh, pretty varied. Uh, Manoa Valley is the majority of the voters in the district, but it, as you mentioned, I also cover... Uh, basically, the Punahou University areas, more mm -hmm. um, where uh, we have uh, in the lower part of the district issues like homelessness. Uh, back in the Manoa Valley, it's less less of an issue. Uh, people have been concerned about uh, increasing tourism in Manoa Valley. Uh, 
we've had uh, a lot of uh, issues related to monster homes and vacation rentals really? in the valley. Really? And uh, it's, it's an aging population there and uh, very uh, well-informed, educated people. So it's a, it's a great area. I grew up in Manoa Valley uh -huh. uh, back in the 60s and uh, it's, um, it's pretty special to me. It's changed though, has it? It has. It's changed a lot. And so let's talk about some of the priorities. You, you, you talked about homelessness and tourism surprises me though. Yes, there was um, I, probably my uh, most visible uh, activities before I became elected official uh, was I started a group called Save Manoa Valley in reaction to a, a large tourist development that was coming up in the conservation area in the back of the valley mm -hmm. and uh, called Paradise Park. Uh, the, the permit they had obtained uh, before the community was really aware of it uh, called for 24 tour buses every day coming to the valley, 440,000 people a year. Mm -hmm. I saw this as our Lani Kai Beach, that really, once this happened, uh, there was no turning back. We turned into a large tourist destination, and uh, it, uh, it's not what people in the valley wanted. I mean, there, um, there's obviously a need uh, to support the industry island-wide, mm -hmm. and everybody does their share. We already draw uh, the greatest number of visitors to any trail up at Manoa Falls, so that's the most uh, heavily traveled trail in the state. Wow. And uh, so we do have our share of visitors. We would have doubled that number if we opened a, a commercial venture in the back of the park. So that was um, uh, that was the area I grew up in, and it was uh, it's always been really pristine there. And people want to keep our unspoiled quality in the valley as much as possible. Well, and and, sp and speaking about that, uh, Representative Kitagawa, you do live in God's Country because mm -hmm. I used to live there too in the Kaneohe area. And what are some of the issues um, facing your district? I think some of the issues um, that are facing Kaneohe all the way to Waihole really are similar to what's happening across the state. So issues of homelessness, like Representative Kobayashi said, um, the number of homeless individuals has definitely increased, especially since the time that I've been growing up there in Kaneohe. Affordable housing is an issue, cost of living. Um, a lot of people in uh, my district have lived in their homes for generations. So there's a lot of um, issues surrounding kupuna and aging in place and being able to um, have the kupuna caregivers program where um, families can have support to mm -hmm. um, help care for their kupunas and make sure that they're able to stay in home and age in place. So those are some of the issues that are important as well as, you know, we have a lot of keiki. Education is a huge issue within my district as well. The, the issue with affordable housing, obviously, it, it, it plagues the entire state, mm -hmm. but windward side is, is no development, right? So where, yeah. what do you do? That's the challenge, I think. I think um, there's really very little land to develop and to grow um, housing out on the windward side. So it really is looking at the um, cost issue, whether or not, you know, I mean, what we see, I think, in, in my district is a lot of multi-generational households. Mm -hmm. So we have families that are living with their parents or are taking their parents in. And so I think that's something that has grown in the community, um, but it's always going to be a challenge to um, have affordable housing. And, and for you personally, I mean, what are the, the particular issues that you want to work on or are working on the session? So my background's in education. Um, I have a master's degree in higher education administration. So before coming to the legislature, I worked at the University of Hawaii at Manoa mm -hmm. for about 12 years. So um, education is really important to me, um, not only higher education and supporting that in our institutions here in the state, but also public education. So having graduated from Castle High School and my children are going up through the public education system in Kaneohe, making sure that we support education in my district is important, making sure that we're able to bring capital improvement projects and funds um, for resources to the mm -hmm. schools in the district, that's important. And then also looking at ways to support um, our working class families, our keiki, our kupuna, um, those are also things that are very important to me. Well, you got a lot on your plate. Yes. So we'll check them back with you in, in, in a bit. Representative Kobayashi, you, you're in Manoa, and then there's the Alawai uh, flood control issue right. going on, and you would think that the two would not mix, but they, they do. Can you? Talk us, tell, tell us a little bit about this that. This has been one of the major issues. Um, I was at our uh, neighborhood board meeting, Manoa, a couple of weeks ago. We had a resolution uh, asking for uh, greater involvement of the communities affected. And uh, Manoa is one of them, um, but also Pololo and Makiki, because the aim of the project uh, really starts in the back of the valleys, and it's to uh, control the effects of a large flood, uh, should we have a uh, hundred year type of rainfall and flood 
ensuing and how that would affect uh, the economic uh, engine, uh, as, as it's been described to me, of Waikiki. So really, uh, the, the project starts with uh, detention basins up in the back of the valley mm -hmm. um, in the communities there uh, to really uh, direct um, controlled flooding should we have a large storm uh, into some of the areas like Manoa School, uh, Kanewai Park, uh, Iolani School. There's certain areas that have been designated to be allowed to flood. Um, have a wall on the Alawai to protect uh, the investment in Waikiki. Uh, so uh, that's, um, that's what the plan had been. And as a result of the need for the t detention basins in the valley, mm -hmm. uh, there are people that are going to be displaced by eminent domain. There are also people that are going to be affected that are close to the flooding areas in the parks, um, including two of the elementary schools in the district. So there's a lot of concern. Uh, the residents definitely feel like they haven't been kept in a loop on this. I've been uh, working with the Army Corps as well as the DLNR and uh, other legislators covering the other areas here. Mm -hmm. And our aim is to uh, really put a pause on this and get people to um, get involved. So I have the Army Corps, uh, we're looking to do a uh, town hall and try to get them to come out and explain to people what they're doing, how they're going to be affected, and listen to the community as far as potential alternatives to displacing individuals. So it's, the, the governor did mention it in his State of the State that, you know, I, I think they were looking for um, state matching funds for the right. federal funding, and that's when, it, that's when I started hearing more and more from people in Manoa. So prior to that, you folks weren't involved in the conversation? No, they, um, the, we had a meeting here at the legislature last week, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they basically laid out the stakeholders that are involved in this. It was the governor's office, mayor's office, DLNR, uh, Army Corps of Engineers. So on uh, the legislative side, we weren't uh, part of that planning group. Okay. And uh, it, it was driven largely by, as you can imagine, the visitor industry's interest uh, in Waikiki. Okay. But now you, you, you are definitely on board and part of the conversation. That's right. So we've kind of forced our way through the door. And I, I think it's a larger conversation that um, as we go forward, uh, do we draw a line as to where the interest of the community uh, sometimes should trump the interest of the visitor industry? And I think um, it's, it's been pretty much a one-way street to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to have a discussion on what limits we should have on that uh, situation. Let's get back to something that I did talk about earlier. You, you both are freshman lawmakers. There are 10 of you in here. Um, a variety of professions, experience. So, Lisa, tell me a little, why, why did you decide to run? Okay, well, um, I decided to run for office. I've always actually been interested in government and policy um, since back in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kind of assumed that I would do this as a second career. So after working at the university, I would retire and then look into going into public office. Um, however, I realized that the community that I was growing up, that I had grown up in had changed so much. There are so many issues, so many things that are going on that needed, you know, taking care of. Mm -hmm. And I have two young children, so my daughter is seven, my son is four. And I started thinking about it and realized that if I wanted to see a future where they would be able to thrive, where they would be able to see um, positive changes in their community, that I needed to, um, run for office now, that I needed to be a part of the solution um, instead of waiting until later. So that's kind of what pushed me to do it because I want to be able to see positive changes for the next generation. Um, and it's really an honor to be able to represent my hometown where I mm -hmm. grew up, um, people that I have known my entire life. And so um, I'm really thankful that I've had or I have the opportunity now to represent um, District 48. And Representative Kobayashi, has it been what you expected it to be, walking around the halls in this state capitol? It has been. I, I, I've never really looked forward to being a politician in and of itself. I think I grew up really believing it to be uh, one of the worst things you can do as far <laughs> as uh, personal enjoyment. I'm, you know, my reasons for doing this are uh, things I, I feel are important to the community and to all of us going forward. But um, it's been what I expected, I would say. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to be watching the two of you. <laughs> but thank you for stepping up to the plate and, and throwing your hat in the ring. I'm sure that uh, it'll be an exciting session and we're not even halfway through. So um, to all of you, keep checking in with us every Monday or Tuesday, whenever we're on again next time 
for Live at the Legislature. We will see you again next Monday. Aloha.